Yesterday we were discussing, or we have been discussing, the subject of Sakicha Kriyaya and trying to see the dissolution or destruction of risen formations. We need to practice, we need to work carefully and respectfully in noting every arising mind body object. Respectfully and carefully. When we make a practice of it, we are also, we also discuss how valuable it is, it is going to be in one second of the noting moment. But uh, the story is not complete as yet. So we shall take up where we left off yesterday and talk about the three kinds of training seka, namely sila seka, the training of morality or moral conduct, samadhi seka, training of concentration. And once you are able to become concurrent with the noted object, when the noted mind becomes concurrent with the noted object, you are bound to cultivate this penya seka, a training or wisdom training. And in this way, with the cultivation of the three trainings, Silas Mari Pena, we are also establishing at the same time the three kinds of sasana, the teachings in our stream of consciousness. When we establish these sasana the teachings, then we can also say that the practice of noble path of eight constituents is also involved in it. So this kind of noble path of eight constituents or eightfold path is the forana of the noble path of eight. The full part of the Ariyas. We are making up. And it is called Koba Paga making up the Furana path. So this has to be cultivated all the time. So today we shall discuss this subject both from the theoretical and practical aspects. In order to sustain one's mindfulness, one has got to note the objects beginning with main objects of rising and falling and every arising object in the body. In order to sustain this mindfulness. And in this way, one cultivates sati energetically, wakefully, alert, diligently. When one faces difficulties, one has the courage, courageous energy. One has enough courage to face the difficulties instead of flinching back from the difficulty. Instead of uh, backing out from the difficulty. Instead, one will only advance towards the progress. So to put down to practice, one has got to use the driving force, instead of, and this is energy, in order to drive the noting mind towards the object so as so that the noting mind is sustained on the object. Only with constant exertion of energy will you be able to sustain your mindfulness on the object. In terms of uh, the literary sense, we may speak it as samavayama, the right energy. If it is constantly applied, then it will block the path to unskillfulness, it destroys the path of unskillfulness, instead it opens the way to skillfulness, to wholesomeness. Because of this exertion of energy, one can grasp the object of attention without missing it. Like uh, we discussed about the, uh, the quality of noting mind, the natural characteristic of noting mind, as, as if uh, penetrating the object, as if when a stone is thrown into the water, it sinks instead of floats on the surface of the water. So too, the noting mind penetrates, so to speak, into the noted object, sustaining mindfulness. As much as you exert energy, you are bound to sustain your mindfulness. 
so that the object is noted and there will be uh, mindfulness activated all the time. With the activation of mindfulness, the mind will fall calm and collected on the object of attention, deepening concentration, so that the noted mind will not be restless, will not go anywhere, will not wander about. Instead, it falls calm and collected on the object noted, such as known as Ave Kepo Samadhi, the concentration which is not distracted, undistracted uh, nature of concentration. It doesn't go anywhere. Instead, it is sustained on the object of attention. It falls calm and collected on the object of attention. Falls, falling on the object means not removed, not being removed from the object of attention. Uh, not being thrown away from the object of attention. Such is Kaniga Samadhi, momentary concentration. Now this momentary concentration is known as Sama Samadhi, the right concentration. Because of right mindfulness, there arises right, right concentration. Right mindfulness is Sama Samasati, right concentration is Sama Samadhi. And these three things, these three powers, energies, namely Sama Vayama, the right energy. Samasati, the right mindfulness. And Samasamadhi, the right concentration. Become one group called concentration group. Now these three groups have this uh, combined power. If there is no mindfulness, the mind will not be uh, concentrated on object. There will be no uh, the mind will be distracted, there will be no concentration. So that uh, if the mind is concentrated, if the mind is concentrated, there will be no pariyotana kilesas, obsessive form of defilements. That means defilements which can arise in the mind instead of being, tr- not as yet being translated into transgressive defilements by body and speech. So uh, this uh, obsessive defilement known in Pali as Pariyotana Kilesa, means that uh, you're obsessed with the desire to enjoy a good sight, good sound, good touch, good smell, good taste, and so on. And also, as regards undesirable objects, objects which don't appeal to you, there may be aversion to those objects that also can be obsessed in the mind. Such is Pariyotana Kilesa. Of course, this uh, this only happens in the mind. You are only obsessed in the mind. Not yet translated into the transgressive forms by body and speech. Of course, uh, you, are trans- you are committing mentally these mental defilements. Once you are able to cultivate the concentration group, namely Priya Sadi Samadhi, this Pariyotana Kilesa obsessive form of impurities will not have a chance to arise in your stream of consciousness. Instead, they are said to be subdued, still. <clears throat> this is uh, uh, Samadhi also will uh, subdue the Prayutana Kilesa and all the three in a group uh, goes to subdue or overcome this obsessive kind of defilements. In a group, group-wise also they have the power Individually also, they have the qualities. So, Variya, for instance, will not accept the mental impurities. By not accepting, uh, it is said to have overcome, to be overcoming these impurities. And blocking the path to Akusala and skillfulness, instead it opens the way to skillfulness. So, this is the function or quality of Variya. And as regards some uh, sati, mindfulness, it does not allow the impurities to enter the stream of consciousness because, as we have discussed, the quality of sati as uh, uh, the manifestation of uh, guarding or protecting. The mind is protected by sati, therefore it will not allow any impurities to enter your stream of consciousness. Such is the quality and function of sati. And as for Smari, concentration, 
It makes the mind fall calm and collected on the object of attention, so that there will be no distraction, no restlessness, no dispersion. Instead, it is concentrated in one place. Sanvedana rasa is the function of concentrating, consolidating the associated mental states into one object of attention. Just like we say, uh, the, the roundable place of roundable place where one has to come into group, so also the noting mind causes this uh, concentration of the mind to fall calm and collected on one object, so that they are grouped into one object. In this way, each of these three mental states has its own qualities. And group-wise also, they have the quality. In this way, they are said to be overcoming the obsessive kind of defilements, pariyotana kilesas, individually and group-wise. That has to be understood. Thus is the value or quality of practice within one second, or one noting mind, one noting moment. In that, these pariyotana kilesas, obsessive forms of defilements, are not given a chance to arise. Instead, it is said to be overcome. Such is the benefit of the practice. In the world, we have families. If the individual family do not take the responsibility to look after their children, then what will happen? If they do not protect them, if they do not teach them, admonish them, then they will go about here and there doing all sorts of things, mostly bad things, and they may also associate with other bad children so that they will become delinquent. So, if such children become delinquent, it is better that they are not born, they are not brought up at all, if they are going to become bad children. So every family has its uh, responsibility to bring up uh, these their children, his children, in the right way, properly. Otherwise, they will not become good by themselves. Instead, if they are left alone, without any protection, any teaching or admonishment, they will only become delinquent. So do with our mind. If we do not cultivate our mind in this way, that is uh, exhaustion with exertion of energy, guarding our mind with mindfulness, the mind will not be subdued. Instead, the mind will not be cultivated. Instead, it will become violent. It will become delinquent. It will become bad, un- unskillful. Like the children, and uh, if the mind is not pro- uh, properly cultivated, there will be elation, dejection, likes and dislikes about desirable, undesirable objects. And uh, there can be also be uh, pride, conceit, jealousy, avarice. And then, in this way, the mind will be spoiled. So, we have to, we need to practice, if we practice mindfulness, guarding our mind with vigilant mindfulness of every arising, beginning with the main object of rising and falling, and every arising object in the body will sustain mindfulness, the mind will form will fall calm and collected on the object of attention, bringing about this Kanika Samadhi, momentary concentration. With one noting moment, there will be one Kanika Samadhi, one moment of Kanika Samadhi. So, there will be one moment of impurities being subdued, stilled. There will be one moment of Kamachanda Nivaranas, hindrances of sense desires, overcome, subdued, and so on. And also, uh, such things like uh, sluggishness, laxity, uh, not wishing to, losing interest in such a uh, practice like high level, high level discipline or the way of mindfulness. Uh, if the mind is not properly cultivated, uh, uh, the, the high level discipline will not be practiced properly. There will be only sluggishness. 
So with the practice, we can overcome this kind of laxity, sluggishness. So we have to apply this uh, energy application of energy. By doing so, we are bound to cultivate first uh, the kind of sada which is clear, the clear kind of sada. So sada has two aspects. Uh, clear clarity aspect and the believing aspect. First of all, if the mind is properly cultivated, the clarity aspect of this field of confidence will be developed. Then there will be no doubt so that one will believe in it. In this way, we can complete, completely develop this sadha in both ways, clarity and uh, believing, which makes up sadha, faith and confidence. Thus, killing the opposite mental states, pachinika dhammas, which can, which are in the way of our progress. With the practice of this concentration group, namely, Sati Samadhi, Pinya, uh, uh, Sati Samadhi and Vriya, Vriya Sati Samadhi, we can subdue with this Samadhi Khanda, this is known as Samadhi Khanda, concentration group, we can overcome these opposite uh, states, opposite uh, states which can block our way. In this way, this concentration group is known as Samatha because it tranquilizes the opposite mental states such as Kamichanda, Niranas, hindrances of sense desire and so on. All these hindrances are said to be subdued or tranquilized by this concentration group. Hence, its name as Samatha, that is uh, tranquility, tranquility practice. So with the energy, when we are able to concentrate our mind, the samatha tranquility will arise. So this uh, the group, concentration group, we are calling it, which uh, consists of, which is uh, made up of the three mental states or mental powers, such as uh, samavayama, the right concentration, and the right energy, samasati, the right mindfulness and samasamadhi, the right concentration. In short, Variya Sadi Samadhi. This makes up, these three things make up the concentration group, Samadhi Khanda. So when these three things are grouped together, consolidated, uh, combined effort brings about uh, tremendous, fantastic energy, namely Samadhi Bala concentration power, the power of concentration, the power of mindfulness, sati bala, then the power of viriya energy, viriya bala, becomes courageous in a very wonderful manner. These three things are very helpful in cultivating knowledge, inside knowledge. For instance, samadhi concentration has the power of sharpening the awareness and uh, the awareness becomes sharpened and penetrating. That has the quality of samadhi concentration. It is it has the quality of sharpening awareness. It has the, the quality of penetrating into the object. Now as for uh, mindfulness, sati, it has the quality of uh, widening the awareness so that your awareness becomes panoramic and strong. It has the power of strengthening and widening your awareness. Awareness means seeing, seeing or observation. observation. Now, Vidya energy has the power of progressing and developing your awareness. So these three things have their individual abilities, individual, individual qualities, so that awareness becomes sharpened, strong, panoramic and progressive. So, in order to sharpen the awareness, one must sharp, one must uh, develop one's concentration. The concentration must be properly developed. There must be strong concentration. Strong concentration, strong, no mind falling into the object of attention. 
If the mind does not fall on an object, then an awareness will not be sharp enough. If it's not sharp enough, it will be blunt, like a knife. So in order to see the nature of mind, the nature of the objects, such as the discernment or definement of mind and body, and the conditionality and the universal characteristics, so one needs to widen one's awareness. So noting every arising object, uh, bringing about this momentary concentration, Kanika Samadhi, moment by moment, you accumulate it. This brings about what is known as bhavana. One by one, moment by moment, you deepen your concentration, that will bring about bhavana, mind development practice, or mental development. And furthermore, with sati, mindfulness, which is the power of strengthening the awareness and widening the awareness. This is also very important. Whatever you note, whatever object you note, any object which arises in the body, you are not noting in a very weak manner, in a casual manner, and uh, instead you note it very strongly, strong activation of mindfulness, so that your awareness will become very strong and panoramic. So, seeing things in a panoramic way, seeing things in a wide manner, means this. When you're noting one object, not only do you observe the object that you note, but you also observe other objects as well at the same time. For instance, when you're noting rising as rising, not only will you observe rising, but also other sensations, the essential qualities such as stiffness, tension, movement, heat, cold, and so on, vibration, and things like that. You are noting only one thing, but you are knowing many things. Such is the panoramic nature of uh, the objects when your mindfulness is strong. So, the teeth can widen one's awareness, also strengthen one's awareness. Such is the power of mindfulness. So then you you sustain your mindfulness respectfully and carefully. You are bound to see uh, your strong and panoramic mindfulness awareness in this way. Now to be progressive in your awareness, you need heroic energy, courage, heroic courage. When in an unflinching manner, not flinching away, not begging away, not begging out from the object of attention, not begging out from the practice, not flinching from the practice, in an unwearied, unremitting manner, instead of being cowardliness, you exert energy in a heroic manner. If you don't exert energy, if you are cowardly, then there will be no advancement, there will be no progress of awareness. Your awareness will not progress. So, on either you uh, exert energy in an ordinary way, or in a small way, or in a considerable way, you must do it in an unflinching manner, in a heroic manner. Whatever arises in an object, you must use your driving force in order to drive your noting mind towards the object of attention. Thus, your awareness will progress. So, you, with the application of these three mental states, mental powers, your awareness will become, will be, will become sharpened, will become very sharp, strong, panoramic, and progressive. These things are necessary. These things are essential. And you don't get them free of charge. You have to apply these three mental states or mental powers namely Vriya Sadi Samadhi, so that your awareness will be panoramic, strong, sharp, and progressive. So, uh, the practice is to gain such quality of awareness every second of the practice, applying these 
are three metal groups. The group of concentration group. You accumulate them, you develop them. Then, if you accumulate and if you develop them, they will automatically become strengthened. Thus, seeing the cultivating inside knowledge, such as the discernment of mind and body, the nature of mind and body, and their natural characteristics and so on. Because your awareness becomes very sharp and panoramic. So, such is the value of one noting moment. You can just imagine. So, once you are aware of the benefit of the practice, even in one noting mind, you are bound to appreciate and cherish the practice. This will lead to the practice of practice with respect and care. If uh, you are concentrating your mind into the every arising object, then it is said that uh, your awareness will be very penetrating and sharp. That means if you don't concentrate your mind on the object, then the awareness will not be sharp and said it will be blunt. So if you, uh, if when you are practicing for some time and your awareness is, not, is blunt and not sharp enough, that, sh- that goes to show, that goes without saying, that uh, your concentration is weak and not strong enough. And also, you sustain, if you sustain mindfulness, your mindfulness has the quality of widening your awareness so that awareness becomes sharp and awareness becomes uh, panoramic and strong. But it goes to without saying that if you forget to note, if you miss the objects and not noting, then your awareness will be narrow, not panoramic. Instead of being strong, it will be weak. And uh, uh, you can just understand that. And we have said that energy, virya, has the power of progressing your awareness. The power so that energy, you apply the energy, your awareness will progress and develop. So if you are not uh, applying energy every second, every moment of the practice, then there cannot be any progress, any development. So, the yogis have come here in order to in order to strengthen their awareness, sharpen their awareness, widen their awareness, uh, develop their awareness. If they are not able to do so, they can just think for themselves what are the things that they are needing. There may be something that they need to do, so you've got to fill up that gap. If you are not able to note properly and miss the objects, then your mind is bound to be overcome, attacked by these mental impurities. The uh, defilements will creep up on you, so that uh, there may arise this craving as regards desirable objects objects which appeal to you. So that uh, previously there was this clarity of the mind as regards the objects. Now, with this uh, impurity creeping up on you, you there, there, there comes about this uh, like a sediment or, or contaminant in the water. This greed or craving as regards the other objects will come, come up, creep up on you. Just like the, when you have a cup of water, a glass of water, yeah, if, you, if, you, if there is some sediment, if there is some uh, contaminant in it, then the, my, uh, the water will not be clear. Only when you keep it for, for some time, it will settle down into sediments, then the upper layer will become clear. So then it will be clear. Otherwise, it will be cloudy. So also, your mind is said to be clouded with this impurities creeping up on you, or like uh, this craving about desirable object, objects which appeal to you. So, this is how your mind becomes clouded, like the cloudiness of the water. So when you are noting, also, when you are able to 
settle down in your practice, sitting meditation. There will be this, there can arise this uh, rapturous feeling, joyful feeling, and happiness as a result of the good quality, good experience of the practice. Then also, there will be this clarity, uh, the clarity of the mind may also be affected. Because if you are not noting whatever arises, good or bad, as we have said, whether good quality or bad quality, in this case, good quality, that is, joy and happiness as a result of the practice, as a result of the experience. Now, there is this uh, uh, special uh, happiness uh, attachment to the practice. This is, if you are not noting it, this is like uh, cloudiness in your mind. My mind of cloudiness. Uh, just like uh, when the water is shaken, the water becomes cloudy. So too, now, the mind is shaken by this attachment so that the mind becomes cloudy. So either you are become attached or you crave for these sensual pleasures or you become attached to good experiences in your practice. Uh, this cause, uh, these two things will cause your mind to become cloudy, like the cloudiness of the glass of water. So you got to what did you have to do? You have to know them off. If not, there will be cloudiness and there will be no clarity. The clarity will be gone and there will be only cloudiness. So, the, this is uh, the original cloudiness of the mind. The original clarity of the mind is the quality of sadha, faith and confidence. As we have said, faith has one aspect, that is clarity of the mind. Now, clarity, if the clarity of the mind is affected, then your sadha, faith and confidence is affected. If the clarity is maintained by noting off either the sense of pleasures or the good experiences, then the mind will settle down and becomes clear. So that uh, on top of the qualities that we have derived from Sri Asadi Samadhi, such as strengthening, widening, sharpening, progressing of awareness, if you add this clarity, then you are bound to have uh, more quality. That is the clarity of, in terms of sadha, faith and confidence, such as the quality of having faith and confidence. If you are able to note so as to become concurrent with the noted object, then you are bound to see the true nature of the objects noted. So that... Uh, <coughs> to be able to cultivate the refined form of uh, defilements, anusya kidesas, and you be, be more, your knowledge, awareness will become more and more deepened. And also with the sila, morality, you are able to overcome the transgressive forms of defilements, that is defilements which can arise uh, physically and verbally. And then also how, uh, we shall also discuss how the, with the uh, purifying, purification of the, the with the uh, purifying, purification of the, the with the uh, purifying, purification